So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is John Anderson. I'm a product planner for Fluke Networks for the Air Magnet Wireless LAN Division. And I'm not sure how the title of this particular session came about. <laughs> I just saw it for the first time last night, Taming the Beast. <laughs> I'm not all that dramatic or exciting, so I, I would never have come up with something that really that cool and that. So it may not uh, be quite that exciting. But um, what I wanted just to share with you guys uh, today, this morning, is just a little bit about what uh, we've been seeing as far as the migration towards 11AC. Uh, I'll start off with some a little bit of uh, insight we've got from a customer survey we did and then just uh, really focus a lot on troubleshooting uh, problems in the Wi-Fi domain. So let me uh, start off uh, first with just um, sharing with you some, um, uh, some responses that we got from a recent customer survey about 802.11ac, just to kind of set the, set the stage and set the perspective. Um, so we sent out the survey to our user base. This is comprised mostly of system integrators and enterprise IT professionals, and asked them a number of questions about their migration path to uh, 802.11ac, starting with, when are you planning to transition? Well, no big surprises. Most of them are either in the process or will be doing it in the next year. Um, but here on the right, we asked, why are you planning to deploy? Is it because you just got extra money to spend? Your network's due for a uh, technology refresh. But overwhelmingly, a uh, majority of them, 54% uh, said to get better network performance. Another 17% said uh, to support denser networks. And obviously, these two kind of go hand in hand because the idea of 11AC delivering faster data rates is really about supporting more clients, uh, having airtime utilization per client be less so that you can support denser networks. So it seems that it's not really about better security or uh, better connectivity. It's really about performance. <coughs> What's the biggest challenge in the planning and deploying the 11AC network? And the overwhelming response wasn't a technical one, but a business one, making the business case for an investment in 11AC. So the expectation was, we're going to get really great performance or a uh, higher capacity network with this, but we have to be able to prove it. We have to be able to uh, make the case that this is really going to pay off for itself. And another very interesting response is how are you planning to roll out 11AC? Yes? To page the whole. At the Lebanon, I'm sorry? At the Lebanon. F11? Yep. Yeah. No. Nah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Here. The two arrows, maybe? Yeah. Ah, thank you. So, how are you planning to roll out 11, 11 AC? Um, are you just going to basically rip out all your current 11N or 11G APs and throw in 11AC in their place? Um, are you just going to do a complete replacement of the existing infrastructure? Or are you just going to do a gradual rollout? And a majority of them said a gradual rollout. Maybe this is tied to the last one and being that it's hard to make the business case. What this means for us is that, as with the 11N deployment, it's going to be a hybrid environment for a long time. 11AC is not replacing anything really. I know that a lot of people now are starting to turn off 11B maybe, um, but for the most part 11AC is being added to the existing uh, bed of clients. You know, as we saw here from the last session from Herman was um, a lot of the clients, you know, their ramp up to supporting these new technology isn't always as uh, fast as some of the APs. So the networks continue to have to support 11A, 11N clients. And what this really means for us, and again, going back to the fact that most people are looking for higher performance, is performance of 11AC networks, even for 11AC clients, are still going to be impacted quite a bit by the presence of legacy clients.
And then finally, um, if you have deployed 11AC, what complaints are you getting about your deployment? And half the respondents said that uh, they can't see the new network or uh, another 22, um, no, I'm sorry, half of them said, and this is the bottom answer here, I don't see any difference in performance as compared to the old network. So we, up, we spent all this money upgrading from 11G or 11N to 11AC, and I'm not seeing the improvement in performance. What percent of your client devices are 11AC compliant? Well, 73% said less than 10% of the clients are. So that could ba basically provide some sort of answer to that first one. So what really this means is 11AC being rolled out pretty much to get better performance, better density. People aren't seeing that. And there's a lot of things on the network, especially on the client side, that utilizes their time that's impacting this performance. Um, this last session, uh, if you were here, you saw a lot of these new um, uh, technologies, new standards being uh, deployed and developed to provide better client connectivity, better client roaming. It really puts a lot of extra management traffic on the, uh, the channels, a lot of overhead. And that management traffic is not being uh, transmitted at 1300 megabit per second fire rates. They're being transmitted at low 11A uh, rates, which utilizes more airtime. So what we really need is solutions, uh, techniques, methods for being able to capture and see all the traffic that's on our channel that's in our network and be able to troubleshoot, be able to get down to the root cause very quickly as to what's causing a lot of these uh, performance issues. And none of us wants to spend all day trying to troubleshoot one customer complaint or one issue. So having the uh, techniques, the solutions in place to be able to go on site, go right to where the problem is, um, capture the traffic, troubleshoot the root cause and do it very quickly becomes very vital. So when we were looking at taking our Wi-Fi analyzer product and being able to adapt it for troubleshooting these new 11AC issues, primarily around performance, uh, it became very important for us, and for our customer base, to be able to uh, be able to have a solution that could see all the traffic on the network. And because there are some clients being rolled out that are three streams, that are three by three, uh, MacBooks being one of them, uh, we want to make sure we could come uh, out with a solution that can capture three streams of traffic and be able to show all the data packets. So while there is, a, there is a lot of value and a lot of problems that you can solve using uh, capture adapters that are one or two streams, there are some things you just can't do unless you have a three-stream adapter. Um, yes, you can see access points and even three-by-three three clients if you don't have a three-by-three three adapter, but it becomes less reliable seeing those three-by-three three clients, especially on the client side, if you can't capture all the data packets. Um, it, you cannot reliably uh, measure and see what's going on at the higher FI data rates. Um, you cannot measure your channel utilization, which becomes one of the most vital measurements uh, to troubleshoot performance issues on 11AC networks. If you can't see all the three stream data packets that are being sent out, you're not going to reliably uh, be able to measure um, your, your channel utilization. You can measure channel duty cycle in terms of RF energy that's, uh, that's used uh, at, in whole, but what you really want to do is get down to what, how that channel is being used. If your channel is 40% utilized and you're getting really slow performance rates, your next step is to find out why, and that's where you really need to be able to see all the traffic, capture all the data packets to see what's going on on that channel. <coughs> you want to be able to see your throughput your frame counts, all this for not only your one and two stream connections, but your three stream connections, everything that's going on in the network. And you also want to be able to connect and verify services throughput connectivity at these higher FI data rates. And so a three by three client will also help you with that. And finally, the ability to decode frames. So what we've come out, so what we're working on right now, what I'm gonna show is actually uh, next version of our Wi-Fi analyzer 
for looking at some of these problems. Uh, this is currently under development. It will be released later this year, but it works on a Broadcom 11AC 3x3 radio. And uh, right now, there's not really any 11AC 3x3 USB adapters that are out there. Um, so what we did is we found a PCI Express radio from Broadcom and are developing Wi-Fi analyzer to use that as our three-stream capture device. Provides the best performance out there of uh, client radios for capturing from promiscuous mode. And it also happens to be the radio that Apple built into its MacBook Pros. And so the radio, it's a 3x3 11AC Broadcom radio that runs inside the MacBook Pro. Wi-Fi Analyzer is a Windows app, so you run it on boot camp, but you can use that radio and do your captures. MacBook Air uses the same radio, but it's a two-stream implementation. So you can run also on a MacBook Air in a 2x2 config, but I'm going to show the 3x3 the three three in the MacBook. If you're running a, a Windows laptop, uh, we have not yet found Windows laptops that are actually shipping with 11AC 3x3 three three radios inside them. So in order to support our release this year of this product, uh, we built a uh, PCI Express dongle that's three uh, stream captures that you can use for your Windows laptops. And so if you're using Windows laptops, you have an Express card slot, you can use the external dongle for that. If you don't have an Express card slot, because they are becoming less and less common, we're going to find ways if you have your... Um, uh, if your laptop has three antennas in there, that you can actually put the PCIe uh, card that we're built into here and that's in the MacBook, put it inside the laptop. And yes, we will come out with a, uh, a USB adapter, but to do true uh, performance troubleshooting and again, to be on site and get to the root cause quickly enough, um, it's very important to be able to see all three streams, be able to capture all that. And so that's what we're going to be coming out with uh, this year. So really, um, what we are looking at that's unique for 11, it's not really unique for 11AC, but it's the main driver of 11AC is performance, being able to troubleshoot performance. Um, there are a number of reasons why you may have performance issues on 11AC network. Categorize them in two high categories. One, clients are not connecting at the higher FI data rates for whatever reason. The other was, even if they are connecting at the higher FI data rates, they may still be getting slow throughput. When you're troubleshooting, you really, it's about fault isolation. You need to be able to measure what's going on in the Wi-Fi network. Is that the issue? But there's also uh, potentials for bottlenecks in the, the backhaul or even the WAN link. And so being able to connect to this network at the highest rates and be able to do throughput measurements, uh, be able to do performance measurements to each point all the way out to the Internet so you can kind of isolate where your slow throughput may be. So looking at uh, some possible causes behind that first one, clients not connecting at five data rates, well, there could be a whole number of issues here. These are just a few samples of them. Um, but for example, if you have an 11 AC clients and they are not properly roaming to the next AP or they're connecting way out the fringes, obviously they're gonna have low signal to noise ratios and connect at the lower MCS rates. Uh, they may also connect at these lower rates or have low SNR because they're getting high noise from interference sources, from non-Wi-Fi devices, or even from adjacent channel interference. Uh, you may design your network perfectly with no channel overlap. But that's not to say the network, the office next door, isn't going to be interfering with yours and have an adjacent channel. That shows up as noise. That lowers your SNR. That means your 11AC clients are connecting at lower rates. And of course, uh, a lot of clients don't currently support two or the three spatial streams or the wider channels or the short guard intervals, <laughs> although I'm not sure this is really a, too much of an issue anymore. Or it could be a, a misconfiguration in your AP. More, uh, the tougher problems though are when you are connecting at the higher FI data rates, but you're still getting slow throughput. And this is where it really helps to be able to look at your channel and how it's being utilized. Uh, channel overutilization due to low speed transmissions. This is one of the most common issues with having slow throughput. 
on these high-speed networks. You may have too many legacy clients out there. And as we saw as a response to our survey, and probably comes as no surprise to anyone, is these 11 AC networks that are being deployed today, the client base will continue to be a mix of legacy clients probably for the next several years. So this is something we have to continue supporting. Uh, excessive management traffic. This could be due to a number of things. There's a lot of new techniques for uh, improving client connectivity, for client load balancing, and, um, and also when uh, multi-user MIMO becomes implemented. There's going to be a lot of uh, overhead traffic in the form of both control traffic as well as management traffic. And of course, management traffic is transmitted at the lower rates. If you have an excess of that, it will utilize more airtime, slowing down performance for your 11AC clients. So this could be due to a number of problems. One of them, maybe you have too many clients trying to connect on a particular channel to an AP. You could potentially solve that with better client load balancing. And again, you may have 11AC clients on the fringes, uh, on the cell fringes connected at your lower rates. Channel overutilization. So even if you are connected at higher rates, if, you're, uh, if you have a co-channel interference, a channel overlap from another AP, and again, it doesn't have to be your AP, it could be an AP outside your network. It doesn't matter. If it's on the same channel, it's going to utilize that airtime. Uh, excessive retries and frame loss. This is a very common problem. Uh, if you have something that can uh, immediately see if you have an excess of retries, then that could, uh, that could really point you to the uh, root cause very quickly. And uh, as you know, Love and AC has a fallback mechanism. So if you have an 80 megahertz channel or even a 40 megahertz channel, and it overlaps, either the primary or the secondary channel overlaps with another AP's 20 meg channel, uh, that by itself would prevent you from being able to transmit uh, simultaneously. However, if you change the primary channel on your 40 or 80 meg channel to avoid that uh, 20 meg channel overlap, then your 11 AC access point can fall back to a 20 or a 40 megahertz channel, still transmit simultaneously because it's on a different channel than the primary 20 meg is, but it's going to be slower. So you could set up an 80 megahertz channel, expect these high transmission rates, and what's going to happen is it may end up falling back to a 20 or 40 meg channel a lot, and um, I'll show you a way we can uh, quickly see that. So those are uh, some of the problems. So let me go ahead and bring up our uh, network analyzer, our Wi-Fi analyzer. Now we are, again, the Wi-Fi analyzer has been out for quite a while, but we are currently working on the 11AC version. And um, I will give myself a get out of jail free card right now and say that this is currently under development. It's not uh, out there yet for beta testing. So there is a remote possibility this could misbehave a little bit on me, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> I'll see, uh, I'll, we'll see what, uh, what we can do with this. So doing a live capture, um, you know, the first thing we see is the, the dashboard, and this gives us kind of an overview of um, uh, the traffic that's on our network. I currently have it set to scan channel 36 as an 80 meg channel. We don't see any channel on this particular one. You can uh, go into the channel scan config, and as you can see, you can set it to scan any, uh, any or all of the 20, 40, or even the 80 megahertz channels. We haven't built 160 megahertz channel scanning in here because I don't know if that's really ever going to get used, and it's certainly not out there today, but you can pretty much set it to scan any of the 80 megahertz channels. But I did come prepared with some uh, capture files so we can take a look at a few of the uh, capture files that I was able to get from some real 11AC traffic. So again, the, this will, the dashboard will immediately show you if you've got 11AC traffic on your network and about how much. So this is showing us right off the bat about 38% of my devices that are connected are 11AC. 
But, um, you know, just for the sake of time, let me get right to the heart of some of the things that we were talking about. The channel utilization, you could very quickly uh, scan down the list to see where your access, what channels your access points are on. And we're going to select, we see the, we have an access point, a station on channel 153, so we're going to select uh, 80 megahertz at that uh, particular channel. And so we can immediately see over time, in real time, what our channel utilization is and what the throughput that we're experiencing on that channel is. So if users are starting to complain about slow throughput, we can go right to this page and see, go right to that particular channel, scan it, and see what is the utilization, what is the throughput overall that it's seen. The next step, though, in getting to the root cause of a problem like this is how is this channel being utilized? So what we see here is a breakdown by speed. I can uh, see it broken down by media, so I can see how much of the channel is being used by 11A or by 11N or by 11AC. But uh, I can also see how much of that channel is being utilized by um, uh, slow frames transmissions. Um, at six megabits per second, for example, which would be management traffic for the most part, or even at high speeds. So this highest category is uh, 600 or above. Now these are five data rates. So these will show me how much of my frames and how many of my bytes are being transmitted at each of these segments. Um, and then we can get a, a better breakdown by um, Going to this chart, we can take a look at bytes and what we see here. Let me enlarge the screen a little bit. What we see here is that uh, we can actually get broken down by individual phi data rates. How much of our channel is being utilized by 11A traffic at each of its phi data rates, by 11N traffic at each of its phi data rates, and by 11AC at each of its phi data rates. So I can quickly go in here and see, is my channel being overutilized by too much traffic that's being transmitted at one, mega, uh, one megabit per second or six megabits per second? And that could uh, very quickly lead me, point me to the, uh, the cause of the performance issue. Or if it's not, I can then go on to the next step to see maybe it's a particular client connection, which we'll get to next. Just as an example, this particular um, connection that we're seeing, uh, right here we're seeing about 89% of the, uh, these frames are by, yeah, 89% of the bytes are being transmitted at uh, 702 megabits per second. And we can go to the decode page and very quickly uh, see, uh, see some of the packets that are being um, transmitted at that rate. So these are the packet decodes, and again, because I'm uh, looking at data packets, I'm not just capturing the one and two stream management control traffic, but I can also capture the three stream data packets. I can see a frame, for example, right here. This particular frame was transmitted at a data rate of 877 megabits per second. It is the uh, VHT mode, three spatial streams, 80 megahertz. Um, all that's detailed out here in the, uh, the packet decode. So I am capturing frames at, um, let me reload my packet, my capture file here. So I am capturing frames here that are three streams and that are um, on an 80 megahertz channel. It's misbehaving a little bit for me here. Oh, it's in a live capture, that's why. Let me go back to uh, 
people in this one. There we go. So I was, um, we are capturing these uh, data frames so we can e quickly and easily see a breakdown of the traffic by speed, by media. We can also see a breakdown of traffic by um, data frames versus control frames versus management frames. And we can see if an excess of our uh, traffic, is, or of our channel is being utilized by control traffic or by management traffic. Oops. Let me uh, go ahead and pull up a capture file that see if we can uh, show that. Some packets here. <coughs> okay, let me, uh, you know what, let me restart the application. Okay, so down here under frames and uh, frames and bytes, we can uh, quickly take a look at how much of our traffic is control frames, how much is management frames, and how much are data frames. We can even see how many are CRC aired frames. Uh, we can also get a get it by byte count. So if we see, for example, we're having a nexus of control frames, we can go to our decode view filter on just the decode frames, I'm sorry, just on the control frames, and we can see is this an access of um, RTS and CTS frames that are being sent, or if it's a uh, high percentage of management frames, are there a lot of probe requests being sent out by clients, too many clients trying to connect to a network? There are a lot of reassociation requests, maybe too many clients are being dropped. Um, a lot of these types of problems will put an excess of management traffic on the channel, causing these uh, slower connections, even for your 11AC clients. Let's say, though, you're in here and you're taking a look at this and everything looks pretty decent, but you're getting a person, one particular user who's complaining that uh, their particular connection is slow, even though they're using an 11AC client, there's some uh, pretty efficient tools uh, within the uh, analyzer that we can go to to analyze a specific connection. For example, on the efficiency tool under 11AC tools, what this will show is I can pick a specific access point and a specific station and the connection between them, and I can immediately see what capabilities are supported by that access point and by that client. Capabilities in terms of the uh, MCS index that's supported, the maximum number of spatial streams, uh, the channel width that's supported, short guard interval, max fire rates, all the things that are going to impact your performance. So I pick a particular uh, access point client connection, and I can, need, let me go ahead and reload my, uh, Reload my capture file here. There you go. So I can uh, very quickly see 
what um, maybe the client that the person is using uh, doesn't support all the, uh, the higher configurations that are needed to get these higher uh, data rates. Maybe it only has one uh, antenna system, can only support one spatial stream. Maybe I did set up an 80 megahertz channel, but because of channel overlap from a 20 megahertz channel on another AP, it's having to fall back a lot. So here I can see whether or not my um, particular connection, whether the AP supports the higher channel widths, the higher spatial streams, what phi data rate it supports, what's the maximum aggregated frame size that's supported. Uh, here's another um, way that we can get higher throughputs for the same phi data rates is by supporting the higher frame sizes that 11AC allows. 11AC mandates the use of uh, aggregated frames at the MAC layer, and it actually can support frames, aggregated frame sizes up to a, a million bytes. So with those higher frame sizes, we can definitely get more efficient transmissions and uh, higher throughput. So this will show very quickly what's supported, but will also show what percentage of the frames are being transmitted on that connection uh, that are part of that particular support. So for example, both my, um, my AP on both the transmit and receive side supports 80 megahertz channels, but on the downlink only 4% of the frames are transmitted on 80 megahertz. On the uplink here, I got 99% of my frames being transmitted on 80 megahertz. So what this is telling me is I got a client on the uplink that's really transmitting a lot here, uh, and it is transmitting on 80 megahertz. However, I've got other clients on the downlink that don't support that, or, or perhaps the APs having to fall back for those clients, and because they're out on different parts of the cell that are experiencing a channel overlap, and so a very small percentage of the frames on the downlink are being transmitted at 80 megahertz. One more thing that uh, I'd like to show um, that's very interesting. Um, these are all things you would use to troubleshoot performance issues on a uh, really any network, 11N or 11AC. Um, but now we're having the capabilities to do that on 11AC networks with the three stream 80 megahertz channel captures. Um, but if you're just uh, wanting to do some upfront planning and some design work, and you want to know what sort of throughputs you can expect to achieve in a hybrid network. So for example, you do have a mix of APs in an environment. You have a mix of stations in an environment that they have to support. Um, what sort of throughput can you expect to see? What sort of data rates can you expect to get? So we have a wireless LAN throughput simulator here. And what we can do is basically build a hypothetical network. So we can say, I'm going to add an 11AC access point, and it will support three spatial streams, MCS of 9, 80 megahertz channel. But I'm also going to add an uh, 11N access point. And then I'm going to add uh, some client devices. I'll add an 11AC client device that also supports three spatial streams on 80 megahertz. Oh, I just, yeah, that was a, I'm sorry, that was a access point. Let me do that again. Station. And this station I'm going to associate with my first access point. Now I'm going to add an 11A device, a station. And I'm going to associate him also with the first access point. I'll add an 11 end of station. And I'll associate him with the second access point and maybe another 11A device. And associate him with the second access point. And maybe an 11A device, associate him with the third access point. So the idea here is we've got three access points that uh, may have an area of channel overlap, a uh, variety of stations that are associated with them. What sort of connectivity and throughputs can I expect, taking into account all the overhead of um, the transmissions, the um, RTS and CTS and other control frames, um, all the interframe spacing, all the 
overhead that really separates the phi data array from what a real world user throughput would be. So if I just run, hit click the run, what this is doing is it's simulating transmissions for all those clients associated with all those access points. And I can easily see the uh, rate, the phi data rate at which each client is associated. So for example, my first AP was uh, an 11 AC AP that was maxed out in wave one config, so it's 1300 megabits per second. And I can see what sort of throughput rate he's really getting on his downlink. And it's bumping around here in the 300 to 400 megabits per second range. But I can also see then what the throughput of each of my stations are getting on, uh, on their uplinks. And see if I add more 11A or more 11N stations that are competing for that airtime, how is that impacting the throughput of my 11AC clients? And this chart on the right then will show you how much of that airtime is being utilized by transmissions of these uh, various by media, by 11A versus N versus AC. So a lot of really good um, techniques that can be employed here to get to the heart of performance issues. Uh, these are just some of the few, the ones that I personally like, um, just because performance issue is really about channel utilization and being able to get right to the heart of how your channel is being utilized and then being able to figure out why is it there are so many low transmissions on that channel that can help you optimize your network or decide what you want to do next as far as um, addressing those. Now we do have a facility in here, utility here called Airwise. And sometimes if you just want the answers handed to you, you can run Airwise. And what this particular facility does is it uh, automatically detects hundreds of different events on the network related to security and related to performance. And um, so by doing a live capture, I can go to this page and immediately see a list of all the events on my network categorized in a number of ways. I can do it by event category. So for example, I can go down here and just see, do I have things that are um, uh, excessive low speed transmissions on my channel 153? Well, that's something we saw on the, the channel page. I have Airwise event basically showing me that. Uh, channel with overloaded APs. So you select the event and it'll tell you what channel, what the uh, actual uh, MAC addresses of devices are. If I'm looking for something specifically by a channel or by a device, I can go to uh, the MAC address of my device, be a client or an access point, and see all the events associated with that particular one. So this is Actually, for most users I speak with, this is the first thing they do. They go to Airwise, they see if uh, the problem that somebody has reported is being reported by Airwise, and they can really get to the heart of it. Otherwise, they can go to the channel utilization, see the breakout uh, by that, and be able to um, determine the, the root cause of performance issues. Any uh, questions about what we're working on for 11AC with Wi-Fi Analyzer or for troubleshooting? All right. Does anybody have anything to, uh, to add to this? How many people use the Wi-Fi Analyzer from Air Magnet? Okay, well, what's, your, what's typically the first thing you do with it? With this product? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll stick it into, um, uh, what's the view? Oh, sorry. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. You have to, um, yeah, you have to scroll back through the windows and I can show you which, which, which one, where I start from. Um, yeah, that one, channel, is it? No, next one. Next the infrastructure, infrastructure. Or interference. 
No, the one where you can see the throughput values on the channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's generally yeah. where I'll start on the, the channel where I've got the problems. I'll look at the, um, the frames, the CRC errors, the retries. That's generally where I'll first start trying to get some metrics. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, just a note about the channels page is it operates in real time. So I was running a capture file. And once your capture file has loaded, uh, it stops running. So you either have to start a live capture here. And then go to it to see in real time what's going on. We don't have any access points on these channels. Well, I guess I'm scanning uh, channel 36. We don't have anything on that. When I'm planning, okay. though, that simulation tool that you showed us, I find probably the most valuable tool in there. And it's hugely overlooked, and a lot of people don't realize it's in there, but it's massively helpful when you're planning a deployment. Yes. So to be able to sim uh, the, the design that you have and predict the coverage that you're going to get. That's a, a massive tool. That's huge. Yeah. Another, um, yeah, no, I'm glad you uh, brought that up because another uh, tool, uh, let me cover quick, is the That's device well. throughput yeah. calculator. So the wireless LAN simulator will simulate a real network environment of mixed APs and stations in that and how they all contend for airtime. Uh, this will determine for a single device, be it an access point or a client, what sort of by data rate you're going to get for the various configurations, and what sort of maximum throughput you're going to get. Now, for maximum throughput, it's, um, it's not really real world because it's not taking into account all the contention in the year for everything else. But what it's determining is if you take your max phi data rate and you subtract all the overhead for that one client or that one AP, what is your throughput rate that's left? And so with this, what I can do is specify an MCS index, uh, the use of short guard interval, the number of spatial streams. We'll go with wave one, deployment of three, 80 megahertz channel. And I can say calculate. And what it's going to show me is this particular bar chart uh, will show me what percentage of the bytes that are, um, are in the frames are transmitted are for data and what percentage are for overhead, uh, interframe spacing, preambles, and all that other stuff. The green is for data. So I can immediately look at this and get kind of an idea of how much of my frame transmission is really being used on a per byte level for data versus other overhead. But down here on this particular chart, I can see what my phi data rate is. In this case, it's 1,300 megabits per second. And if I subtract all the overhead, what my throughput would be in this case, it's 753 megabits per second. But the yeah. other variable here that uh, gets overlooked a lot is the maximum frame size that's allowed. So if I'm using aggregated frames, um, if I use what is you know, typical standard of 32, um, about 32,000 byte frames, this is what I get. But if I max out of what 11AC allows and then recalculate this, Just by having a larger aggregated frame size, I get a much more efficient transmission. And my throughput now has gone from 753 to 1,271 megabits per second. Yeah, now, now you'll, you'll get that. But the problem is that people don't realize they make buying decisions thinking that's what they're going to get. But you, yes. then you add in your least capable device and watch how it comes down. Yeah, then you, you have realize why you're not getting it. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good point, Neil. You have to really, I mean, you as a professional, have to, I mean, this is a tool for you, and yeah, you can't go to your customer and say, okay, I'm going to max out your aggregate frame size, and you're going to get 1,200 megabits per second. You, you know, that's not going to happen. Um, just me personally, the testing I've done with my MacBook, which is 3x3 11 AC, right next to an access point, connected at 1,300 by data rate, and doing file transfers, the max I've seen on this thing is about 600 megabits per second in a fairly clean environment. But what this is showing you is what your throughput would be just minus the uh, overhead of the wireless LAN layer one and layer two. Uh, 
Yes. Oh, if, go ahead. One more time. <laughs> Sorry. When are you coming out with 3x3 three three support on the Air Magnet Enterprise system? Um, we are coming out with 3x3 uh, three three support on the AME, on the Air Magnet Enterprise system. I can't tell you at this point when that's going to become available. Okay. But you, you are going to have it, of course. Yes, yeah, I can't tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know the answer to that particular one. The Wi-Fi analyzer, this will be out uh, later this calendar year. And again, the support is going to be for uh, the radios and MacBook Pros or this external dongle. And of course, we are working on other 3x3 adapter solutions to make sure we have a ubiquitous, always available offering. Thank you very much. OK, well, that's really. Um, all I had for this uh, particular session. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Okay. Um, just, uh, just curious. One last thing. Um, one thing I can quickly show, since we do have about uh, about ten minutes left is uh, we did recently release our um, planning tool for 11AC. And so, um, well, yeah, with the, yeah, let me go ahead. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, dismiss, because I don't know if I'll have enough time to go into that. <laughs> but hey, if any of you are more interested in, um, uh, seeing what we are working on with the analyzer and the 11AC and the 3x3 capabilities and that, just feel free to contact me, send me an email. Uh, we will be uh, putting this out for beta testing probably in another three or four weeks. So if you're interested in uh, beta testing this, you know, just send us a note and let us know. We'll be happy to get, once you get your hands on this and start using it for real world uh, network troubleshooting, it'll, it'll be interesting to get some of your uh, feedback on it. Okay, thank you.